Hi, this is Mo Volans for Tuts Plus, and you're going to have to bear with me a little bit because I've got a bit of a killer cold here, so I probably sound a bit bunged up. Uh, there might be a few gaps where I have to clear my head, <laughs> um, but apart from that, we should be fine. Uh, but in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, well, a direct request from a friend of mine um, called Kirk Douglas, and that is his real name. Um, he's a DJ um, up in Scotland, and he asked me about this subject, and I might have given him some incorrect information um, regarding exporting tracks from Logic to another door and I wanted to clear that up in the, with this video and I think it's going to be helpful to a lot of people, uh, not just Kirk. So now just as a bit of a side note here, I did actually cover uh, this subject back in 2010 uh, but and it was actually moving between Logic and Cubase in a very similar way um, but things have changed since then, things have become more streamlined now and the, the workflow has really changed so I thought I'd sort of recover it and revisit it. So let's get into it and what I'm looking at is taking this project from Logic Pro 10 uh, into Cubase but really this is going to work taking stuff out of Logic and putting it into any door or really it's the same process, the same workflow at least uh, going from say Cubase to Logic and what I want to look at is how to get a mixture of MIDI and audio into one consolidated folder ready to bring into your new door. So you can maybe take it, in Kirk's case, I know he's taking it to a friend's studio and he wants to bring it from his studio and they want to mix a track. So this is sort of, you know, your classic situation where you've made a track at home. You've maybe got a mate that's got, you know, more kit and you want to go and mix it around at his place. This is going to be, you know, what you're going to need to do. I've got an example project here that's a mixture of a couple of audio tracks and a couple of MIDI tracks. It's really just a test project to sort of show you um, you know, what you'd be doing. It's just a loop, actually, this one, but you could do this with a whole arrangement. I just did this to keep it simple. Um, but I'm going to show you a few sort of che a checklists that you've got to do on both ends and then the actual workflow. So we've got, let's play it back. And the first thing you're going to notice is that I was playing with some filters there. So some of the elements have actually got filtering on and you know, this is something I sort of want to talk about when you're exporting because you're going to want to open those filters up because what you don't want to do is hit the other end and find you've filtered something or you've affected it too heavily and you can't, um, you can't sort of open up the filtering on it because once you get to your mate's studio, if you've whacked a low pass filter all over something uh, you're going to regret it on the other end you can always replace that filtering you know with a similar plugin but you can't open it up once it's uh, once it's closed so i would go through and sort of open all these filters in fact you might want to just turn them off and see if you can get the the new plugin at the other end um, with something like this you can probably take even take your license you know but i would just open these up um, at least to the point where you're happy with the way it all sounds and another thing uh, you'll notice is it's pretty loud. Um, that's because there's a limiter on the end and that's just, I was just experimenting with the way it might sound with some basic, very, very basic mastering. So some people work with a limiter on the end. I do sometimes, sometimes I don't. Um, and you're going to want to turn this off. And you want to want to ensure that when you do turn it off, there's still headroom. And we're all right here. There's plenty of headroom. Uh, we've got about four or five dB, in fact. And the same with all the other tracks. Uh, and what I would do is sort of go through the tracks and just check them for faults. And then maybe isolate them, you know. And in this case, we've only got a few to check, right? But if you've got a whole arrangement, you might want to spend some serious time here just going through, listening to things in isolation, especially if it's a critical project you're taking somewhere to master or mix for a release. Go through, just listen to all the drum sounds, make sure they're trimmed correctly. Of course, on the other end, if it is audio, you can do some editing, but I very much doubt if you're going somewhere to mix something, you're going to want to start editing things and changing your arrangement. So once you've done this, uh, take solo off everything, 
and close a mixer away. And you used to have to, and this is, I think, what I advised Kirk to do, you used to have to select everything and then export like that. But in Logic Pro 10, under export, we've now got all tracks as audio files, which is really useful. Um, and let me just shut this down so it's a bit smaller. And I'm going to go to the desktop, and I'll just make a folder on the desktop, in fact. And let's go Untitled Folder. Okay, so this is going to put everything in our new Untitled Folder. Um, I want to keep it 24-bit. You can go 32-bit flow if you like, but 24-bit's fine for me, for Cubase. Um, and we're going to, you can bypass the effects plugins. We're not going to because we run that check. You can include any volume or pan automation. So depending on whether you want to rework that at the other end, you want to leave that on or off. Include audio tells useful. I mean, that's included by default here uh, because we've left the effects plugins on. Um, but basically, if there's any delay or reverb, if you've just got a loop selected, and let's just go back to the arrangement and zoom out a little. If you've just got this loop selected and there's any reverb tail, you'll catch the end of it, basically. Um, if you want to do it manually, you could select, you know, maybe double the amount. That's going to make sure you get everything. Um, let's go back to export all tracks as audio files. And now we've got to reselect the 24 bit. Um, so that's included by default. Normalize. This is going to take the loudest point of your any audio file to 0 dB. Now, I'm going to just have overload protection only because we check the headroom of the, both the master output and the individual audio files. Um, add resulting files to audio bin. That means you can bring them back into the project you're working on. In this case, we don't need to do that. Um, I'm going to go to back to my desktop and back to my untitled folder and close this down. It says 10 tracks to be bounced. So let's save that, let's do that. And it's gonna export all these tracks. Now I'm gonna just pan away while it does this so you don't have to sit and watch it. Okay, so the process is finished. And one thing that I will say, uh, you might have noticed that the progress bar was showing a massive amount of time. That's because you need to grab this end point, the end point of the track here and you really need to put that at the same point as the uh, you've selected for the left-right locators. Otherwise, it's going to export an, you know, an audio tail for the entire project. So just grab that endpoint and put it to wherever you want. I put it to double the amount, okay? Um, now we've got a folder with our tracks in. It exported some hidden tracks, by the way. I've got some strange dog barking effects in the background that I deleted. But we've got seven tracks here. There's our bass. Our drums, hats, I'll just scroll through them, pads, various pads. Very strange sounds, but basically everything, you know, I've checked everything and everything's great. If we open it in, in an audio editor, I'll just open it in Soundtrack Pro quickly and zoom this back down to 720. There you go, you can see the audio audio file there. Everything's great, everything's fine, and uh, you just want to run a quick check on these. And now we're ready to start bringing these into Cubase. Um, they're 24-bit files, they're unnormalized, and we've got plenty of headroom, so we're good to go into our uh, new door, and in this case it's going to be Cubase, and I'm going to pan away now and uh, come back when I'm ready to import them. Okay, so here we are in Cubase. Uh, this is actually Cubase 7.5, uh, as far as I can remember. Um, yep the latest version, and we're now ready to import our tracks in, and I've got my folder here, and I find this is the easiest way, to be honest with you. You can go through the import menu, right, if you want to, import audio files, but honestly, I think if you've got the, the, de the folder on the desktop or on a CD or a memory stick or whatever, hard drive, grab it, have it open, drag the files just straight into the arrange window, and it's going to say, give you a few options here. It's going to say, uh, do you want them on different tracks or one track? So one track would make them consecutive on a single track. But I'm going to go with different tracks. It's then going to say, do you want to copy them to the working directory? Say, yes, please. Do you want to convert and copy to project if needed? Uh, yes, please. Uh, and then please don't ask again. So you can have to, you know, not ask you the same questions every time. You don't want to split multi-channel files. You want to leave them what's called interleaved. Otherwise, stereo files are going to be one file for left, one file for right. It's going to bring them in, and there they are. Uh, and it's even analysed them. Now the nice thing here is that um, it's basically kept the same relative levels. We probably want to 
turn the levels down a little bit. Let me try and get this into the 720 window. It's always a challenge. Um, but we probably want to turn these down, you know, um, just so that we don't get a huge amount of clipping. Um, but we've got more or less the same relative mix. And also we've got the, the, the same names, so we should be pretty much good to go. Um, obviously, with a larger tr with a larger project, you're going to have a lot more tracks. You'll have a lot more silence and a lot more space. But we've got no clipping. We've got a perfect uh, translation between the doors. There, I'd say that's about the fastest way to do it uh, in my book. And uh, also the you know the best way to ensure that your files are sort of pristine on the other end. We've got all our audio tales. So if you look at you know some of these pads, the release is preserved which is great because you don't want that cut off. You don't want any of the reverb cut off. So hopefully this has been a help to Kirk and to everybody else doing similar stuff, uh, moving from Logic to Cubase or whatever door. And uh, hopefully it will help you, you know, get your projects mixed. And as ever, if you've got any ideas for future tutorials, just leave them in the comments, uh, either here on YouTube or on Tuts Plus. And uh, I'll try and fit them into my to-do list. I'm now going to go and recover from this killer cold. So I'll see you next time. Bye.